I'm here with Lord Burstead. Um, I've come to Farley Hall and I'm overwhelmed by the amazing facilities. I, I think from the reaction from everybody else, it's truly beautiful. So congratulations on that. Thank you. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about the history and what your relationship is with equestrianism. Well, I, I was brought up riding. My father used to point to point. Uh, my mother rode hack mainly and hunted. So I was brought up doing that. and. Then when I went to Oxford, I was master of the Oxford drag for a while and started point to pointing. And I carried on after I left um, and started work. I started working as a computer programmer, which was great because it was flexible hours and so I could ride and then go and work till nine. And they were very happy. But I used to keep my horse uh, near Oxford. And after I'd been riding, there was nothing. I mean, I had to change in an outdoor loo, which was firstly wasn't the best in terms of when you've just been taking exercise and secondly it was bloody uncomfortable in winter and so mm -hmm. I conceived that when I if when we conceived of this facility I wanted it to have as good a facility for the riders as it has for the horses and as you've seen for the horses it's superb but the it's also got changing rooms it's got lockers it's got showers it's got somewhere to work so it, it gives, we aim to give an all-round service not just a riding facility. Yeah, I think that's what's really different when you come here actually and you do wander around. It's not just the horses taken into consideration. You can actually come here, ride your horse and do a bit of work, which is we, unbelievable. We have one of our um, uh, owners who actually is a salesperson and she does a lot of her work and from here and then goes up because she doesn't need to be working from an office. Mm. She's entirely working, visiting, and, but she does a lot of work here. Um, I don't know whether the employer actually knows how many hours she is working here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another thing. Is, I mean, this is another ball game altogether, but with the way technology is going, there seems to be less requirement to be in an office nine to five. So this model, and as Claire Balding also said, it, it is a model for the future yes. where people can integrate. Because one of the things I think is really important is I'm horsey myself. To get that balance between riding and having a job is nearly impossible. Yes, well, I mean, that's what we're trying to accommodate here. And uh, if you want, we can even accommodate people who can only ride occasionally and we ride their horses when they can't make it. Or you can come and do a lot of your work yourself. And then, of course, it's a bit cheaper, a lot cheaper. Because, uh, but we, we try to accommodate a mix for whatever you want. We have training courses here uh, d of different levels. And we've actually, the first time this year, we actually ran our own event on, on the Swallowfield Park which was very successful, much to our delight and a bit of surprise. So we did, my daughter who ran it, Natalie, put a lot of work into it and it, and it was, it, well, it just worked. So are you still an avid racing fan? Are you, do you follow the National Hunt Circuit or? No, I, I like doing it. I don't actually terribly like uh, watching it. <laughs> Even though my cousin, Sam Whaley Cohen, obviously is very successful and, and Robert is a senior guy in the jockey club, but. No, I, I never really liked watching racing. I liked doing it and I liked riding, but no, I, I didn't find it a spectator sport. No. But Are you still doing any hunting yourself? Or? No, I, I gave it up. When I started working more seriously, I found I just didn't have time mm. to do riding and I was working in the city and I had to give it up and I've never really taken it up again. So, I mean, but I sometimes toy with the idea of, of, of riding around here. I mean, we, we can, you could ride for five miles in a circuit and only cross a road out and back. So it would be, um, it's a lovely place to hack around. Yeah. No, it is quite beautiful. It, it really is. It's an amazing, amazing place. And what about the heritage and history of Farley and, and Swallowfield, like you said before? You know, why is it sort of so special? Because it feels special when you're here. Yes, well, we moved in 52. My father moved into a grade one house up on Farley Hill. And he took one look at the house and its view, which is fantastic. The gardens were landscaped by a man called Bridgman, who was a royal gardener. And he just fell in love with it, and he had to have it. And we had 120 acres when we moved here. And farm, over the years, mainly in the late 50s, early 60s, a whole lot of surrounding farms came vacant. My father bought them up. And in particular, he bought Swallowfield Park in 65, when Lord Russell died. And this, this was a farm actually used for um, beef cows at the time. And uh, when the tenant left two years, two years later, when his arthritis actually got too much for him, 
we, we've used it for keeping beef and then for a while it was rented out to various people including someone who glued together cars that had been in accidents which was one of our less salubrious tenants <laughs> um, but we've been we've so we've had used it for various things and then when Mark Robbins our estate manager joined we said well let's do try and do something uh, which is not just farming here and I'd always had this idea of doing a livery which catered for horses and people and so that's what we did. Well I think it's absolutely wonderful and I, I love all the little touches all the detail um, it's such a smart place and I wish you lots of success with that new indoor because it really is fabulous.